welcome to Choral Evensong on this the third Sunday of Lent. We begin our worship with the hymn, Take Up Thy Cross for Saviour Set. and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, unto the throne of a heavenly grace, saying after me.
Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus you our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him in which we do at his present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips.
Here begins the fourth verse of the sixth chapter of the book Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So ends the first lesson. Stand for Magnificat.
Here begins the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that, you'll, so that the Son may glorify you. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. So ended the second lesson. We stand on the business.
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Sing our anthem, Wash Me Throughly, by Samuel Sebastian Wesley.
May I speak here. May you hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's been two even songs without a sermon. You're not getting away that likely. It is Lent. In tonight's second lesson, Jesus is praying. He's not talking to the disciples, and he's not talking to us. He's not teaching, and he's not giving instructions. He's praying, and we were listening. And what a prayer it is. What did you hear in his prayer? I'm not just asking about what he prays for. I'm asking about what's behind his prayer. What's going on in him? What's his prayer really about? I ask those questions because one of the things I know about prayer is that we never simply offer our words. Instead, our words are an offering of ourselves and the circumstances of our lives. There's always more going on than the words we say. They are just the tip of the iceberg, an outward and audible sign of some inner stuff going on. And I think that's true for Jesus in tonight's passage. Recall, if you will, what was going on for Jesus the night of the Last Supper. Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. A final meal has been shared. He's told them he's leaving. The end is near. Judas has left the table and went out into the night. And according to John, Jesus is troubled in spirit. He knows his friends will abandon him. You will leave me alone, he tells them. Peter will deny him three times. Thomas doesn't know the way. Philip wants to see the Father. And Jesus feels the world's hate. No wonder Jesus' prayer is rambling and circuitous, confusing, repetitious, and hard to understand. I suspect that's less about the prayer and more about what's going on in Jesus. And I suspect you have had times like that too. I suspect there have been times when your prayer was rambling and unclear, back and forth, contradictory, moving all over the place, like those little crazy ants that climb into your kitchen and steal your fondant fancies. I think this happens on those nights when it seems everything is on the line and we can't tell if things are falling into place or falling apart. They are those circumstances that call everything into question. They are the times when we wonder what we've really accomplished. Did we make a difference? Was it worth it? What's my life really about? They are times when we are overwhelmed by joy or devastated by loss and grief. They are those times when we were trying to get clarity about ourselves come to terms with our life. Who are we? What do we do now? Do we have what it takes? They are the transition points, threshold moments, and circumstances when we're trying to make sense of ourselves and our life. With working out our life and struggling to be authentic, faithful, and whole. And I think that's what we see and hear in Jesus' prayer tonight. But he's not as different from us as we often think or sometimes want him to be. Tonight, we see the human Jesus 
standing in solidarity with us and our humanity. Tonight we see the human Jesus working out his life. And who here tonight doesn't know what that feels like? But tell me this, what are you working out and struggling with? And what is your prayer in all that? I can't tell you what to do because I don't have the answers. But maybe tonight's passage from St John's Gospel offers a way forward. What strikes me is not what Jesus does, but what he doesn't do. He doesn't isolate or close in on himself. He doesn't get angry or resentful. He doesn't resist or fight back. He doesn't run away or try to escape. He doesn't complain about or deny the reality of what is happening. He doesn't blame others. He doesn't give up. And he doesn't search for an answer to fix it all. Instead, he faces his life. He's doing his own inner work. He acknowledges what has happened. He names his reality. He stays in touch with his humanity. He speaks from the heart. He feels what he feels. He grieves. He weeps. He gathers with his friends. He is concerned for others. And he prays. He lives and dies with an openness to a future he cannot control. So, what about you and me? What if we took our cue from Jesus? What would that look like in what you are working out and struggling with tonight? During these days of Lent, I encourage you to spend time in prayer and working these things out. Amen. And sing the hymn, Be Thou My Garden.
This evening we heard the psalmist cry out to the Lord in pain. And as Jesus was praying with his disciples before his passion, as we gather before the altar of the Lord in this place, let us open ourselves to the Lord in prayer, trusting that he will listen and have compassion. Heavenly Father, who right through thy Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us, saying, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. Give us grace now to ask in faith according to thy word, to seek only what is agreeable to thy holy will, and to knock with patience at the door of thy mercy, until our petition is granted, and our prayer is turned to praise in glory of thy name. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we journey through this season of Lent, let us pray that our hearts and minds may be focused on the saving act of love in Jesus our Lord, found nailed to the cross, and that through faith, we may become heirs of his eternal victory. O God, who by the cross and passion of thy dear Son did save and deliver the world, grant, we pray, that holding before our eyes the cross of Christ and by steadfast faith in the merits of that holy sacrifice, we may find help and salvation and may triumph in the power of his victory. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who find themselves to be refugees this night. For those who have been forced to flee their homes for various reasons. For those who are desperate and destitute. Almighty and merciful God, whose son became a refugee and had no place to call his own, look with mercy on those who today are fleeing from danger, homeless and hungry. Bless those who work to bring them relief and shelter. Inspire generosity and compassion in all our hearts and guide this and every nation towards that day when all will rejoice in thy kingdom of justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to the end of this day, let us pray for God's blessing to rest on those who are sick in any way, on those who watch and wait with the dying, on all who care for the sick, on those who are bereaved. And let us ask for God's blessing to rest on us and on those whom we love. A God who art full of compassion, whose hand is ever stretched out in blessing and healing upon the sick, we pray thee for all who are sick at this time and for those nearing the end of their earthly pilgrimage. Grant unto them the reassurance of thy presence. Give wisdom and skill to all who tend to their needs. And enable us to do our part through prayer and acts of kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God this night, as we say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, Fight the Good Fight with All of Thy Might.
yourselves. Take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.